Hey, how's school going? Good. Yeah, um... Yeah, okay, we'll go for a quick rip. Awesome ride. Yeah. Good ride, everybody. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned to the channel. Like, subscribe. You guys are awesome. Dirty Forks! Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, the beast is in the stand. And, uh,. I'm thinking I might do something here. Um, that I don't know if I really want to do. <laughs> but I think I'm going to give her a shot. So um, I acquired this giant right here. It's an old giant Yukon, and it still has the haze brakes on it. So I'm thinking that maybe it's compatible. I wasn't gonna do disc brakes on this bike, and I still might not, just because then I just have posts sticking out from the V brakes. But on that frame was this, which is a 26er. And it's a double wall rim. And also on that frame was this, a 26er rear which is also a double wall rim. So the story is this, I got a, uh, I got this bike from somebody who brought me <laughs> five bikes to repair and kind of restore and whatnot. And he had another giant bike. Um, so he had this giant Yukon and another giant and call it a, a giant iguana and so i i'm like well i can't save both bikes because one is is not savable and whatever so i decided to save the iguana bike for him and i took parts that i needed to save the iguana off the yukon and when he came and picked up the bikes, he was so happy and everything that, you know, he's going to have a trail bike finally. And uh, he says, well, just keep the, the parts from the Yukon that are, that are left over. And uh, I said, are you sure about that? He says, yeah. I said, okay, perfect. So I did. I kept them. And uh, what I usually do with parts like this is uh, bring them down to the... Uh, community bike shop that I uh, volunteer at and uh, they can use these these parts but uh, I was looking at it and I thought well if there's any opportunity to put disc brakes on my mountain bike this is this is it so I haven't I'm doing this video blind which I, I, I like doing these kind of videos um, because I literally have not tried any of this yet to see uh, about compatibility and whatnot. So the, the thing of it is, is it's uh, come off of a giant and they, they were stock on there. So that's usually a good start but uh, we'll see. I think the Yukon is probably the same age as this bike. So that's also another good sign. 
And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens here. I'm not entirely sure that I'm gonna go through with it. But uh, yeah, that's why I decided to do a video because um, this bike is pretty dialed, as dialed as I thought it would ever be. <laughs> so um, leave it to me to try and do something else to it. So the only other thing that's uh, about this uh, this so-called upgrade potentially is that this is a seven speed freewheel on here and what I've got on the on the other one on the on the other wheel is a is an eight speed cassette so dropout room may not be compatible but I think it's going to be so, uh, so yeah, and that just, uh, that forfeits my seven speed shifter setup that I've got here. So it's actually a little bit of work to do this and, uh, but it's fun though. And this is the work I love. Um, and it involves cave changing up the cables and the housing and it's fairly, it's fairly involved, but uh, we'll see what happens. So stay tuned <laughs> and uh, follow along and see what happens together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take off the brake calipers. I'm just gonna take it off um, from the bracket here. These are pretty used, but definitely still good. It's got lots of good spring. I got lots of good spring action. It's very, uh, it's still, Got lots of life left in those calipers for sure. And I'm gonna take the caliper off the the fork. I'm really interested to see if these work. This is how it's gonna be compatible. So I'm just gonna tag those. so I don't mix them up. This one is front, this one is rear. It's important, it does make a difference um, as far as the, the mounting brackets are concerned for front and rear. And this guy, like, still got travel. But this is why I took them off that bike. As you can see, the extreme rust on the stanchions. Once they get to that point, it's pretty much forks of garbage. I'm just gonna remove the brake pads. So I'm just gonna remove the brake caliper, or the brake pads I mean. Sometimes you have to back out the adjustment to get the brake pads out. So I'm just going to back that all the way out and just take this guy out here. That guy out and this guy out. So as you can see, it's super dirty, which we're going to fix that. And I'm going to label brake pads as well so there's the cleaned up rear caliper and there's the cleaned up front caliper so like I was saying still a lot of spring action left in the front 
and lots of same spring action in the rear. This here um, adjustment fitting for the five for the five mil Allen is stripped. As you can see, you can see it there. It's pretty stripped. So, uh, and I don't know, somebody has put this, inscribed this on here. I have no idea what that means. But, um, yeah, sometimes people just, you know, Sometimes people just don't take care of their stuff, which, you know, whatever. So I'm, uh, I'm still going to try because if it, if this stuff is compatible, then, uh, you can always get new calipers. So, okay. So these, these guys here are going to have to be resurfaced. They've got a ton of pad left, as you can see. Um, well within the acceptable wear range. In fact, they're not hardly worn at all. But um, as you can see, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Oh, yeah, there it is. There's a bit of a shine going on there, and they're a bit dirty. So they're going to have to be resurfaced. So the way that I resurface pads is uh, I have... 150, 150 fine grit sandpaper and it's a decent length strip and uh, probably about 10 inches and I just do this back and forth nice even pressure on the pad and then just check for the spots that are focus in here there we go Check for spots like right there that still need a little bit of work. And then you bring the pad down, resurface the pad down until there's no shine or very little. To me, that's, that's good right there. So you can already see the difference, right? Um, You can actually do this um, as regular maintenance for your pads that are on your bike currently. Um, they don't have to be these type. This is a magnetic type pad. Be any type pad. And uh, yeah, I just resurface them, and it just helps prolong your your well your rotor life really. Extending the life of bike components is a good thing. Especially these days when they're hard to come by. And also, it's just a good thing in general. It saves your bike. Most importantly, it saves you money. <laughs> so anyway, you can see the pad dust there. It's... But now the pads are are good to go. So yeah, that's uh, that's as far as we'll go for that for now. And now let's uh, let's get into the bike. So first things first, I gotta just undo the brake line here, the back and the front. I have mixed mixed feelings about doing this. But uh, I'm not gonna do it if it's, uh, I'm just gonna do this slowly, methodically. I'm not gonna do it if it's uh, going to severely impact the rideability of this bike or if the component tray is off for compatibility, I'm also not going to proceed with it.
because I've got my bike pretty dialed and I don't really need this brakes. <laughs> um, just because I love working on bikes, I, uh, I'm going to try. Okay, so what I've done, I've just taken the tire off and the tube and I have put the skewer on that was on my original wheel and I've taken the skewer off this wheel that was on this wheel here. So I just want to keep my good skewer here on, on the wheel. Um, and as you can, I don't know if you can see this or not. Right there, that's that's the valve stem hole, but um, you can see, I don't know if the camera picks it up too well, but it is double wall. So, moment of truth for the front. I'm just, I'm starting with the wheels first because um, I don't want to get the calipers on there. The wheels aren't going to work, obviously. So... So I see that this wheel is compatible for sure. Definitely fits perfectly into the dropouts with no problems. And it this wheel is straight as an arrow, <laughs> which is amazing because I'm sure it has never been I'm sure that wheel has never been true, but uh, yeah, it's honestly as straight as an arrow. So now I'll do the same with the rear wheel. So this is the rear wheel. As you can see, the dark disc, uh, this, this wheel actually needs a little bit of work because I can't, it's like it doesn't move freely because the dark disc is wedged in behind the the cassette uh, I hate dark discs <laughs> um, but anyway that's beside the point so this will be the true uh, test um, because uh, this will tell me if there's room enough for an 8-speed back there I think there's going to be but like I said this video is raw I've not tried any of this so you're seeing it just as I'm seeing it I am going to put my original skewer in there and then we'll get it on the bike hopefully. Okay, so my quick release skewer is now on there, the original one to this giant bike, my Revel. Test it out, see if it goes on. I still have the chain on here, I don't want to take it off unless I have to, if everything works out. Holy smokes. <laughs> well. That's, uh, that's amazing. That is amazing, I have to say. I am surprised. It is compatible. Now, it's a little off center because of the width of the cassette but that can be adjusted as you can see that is an eight speed cassette right chain line looks decent as you can see it is just a hair off center. Maybe you can't see that. It's just a hair off center. But that's, that's uh, like I say, that's adjustable. Um, 
because there's definitely, if these rims do fit, I have to do full hub services on both of them. Um, I'm not putting these wheels on without doing the hubs. So if I do that, it literally needs maybe a couple millimeters to the right, to the drive side. And uh, yeah, there might even be a space, once I get all this uh, fun stuff off here, there might even be a space here and there I can take out and that'll just solve the issue right away. Uh, sometimes there's spacers in between the uh, between these two cogs here usually come off and then the rest is like a one piece cassette dealio. Sometimes there's a spacer in there between the second and third. But yeah, so far so good. Again, this is a double wall rim. So uh, yes, um, what I'm gonna do now is test the compatibility on the calipers and then we'll go from there. So what I'm doing here right now is I'm taking the bracket, the mounting bracket off of the caliper. I'm just gonna leave those, the screws, uh, the bolts, sorry, slightly threaded in to see what I'm working with here. So I've just effectively taken the, the mounting bracket off of the caliper. Which judging by the post, the posts on the forks here, I might not even need it. That's all depends though if this is gonna work. Compatibility is the key. Let's see. Let's see what we got. These are just little rotors too. They're, uh, they look like 160s. I'd have to get the gauge out to measure them, but they do look like 160s, so. Which is fine. Well, uh, holy smokes. <laughs> that's, uh, that's insane. That's crazy. I was doing this expecting it not to work. And, uh, look at that. It's a perfect, perfect match, fit, everything. That's crazy. But the front is the easy one. So let's go to the back now. Okay, so like I say, the front's the easy one. I try to get a little bit of, of a better angle here so you can see uh, sorry about the lighting. I just don't have a stuff for proper lighting. So what I'm going to do is, I don't have the stuff yet that is. So what I did was I took the wheel off just so that to see um, about compatibility on that side. And I'm going to keep the wheel off caliper on without the wheel on on the back one because it does matter which way these go so as you can see on the bracket it says forward see here on the bracket uh, 
focus in. Yeah, it says forward. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's an FWD. That's forward. So we want to make sure that we put that forward. And this is a pull, a cable, a mechanical brake. So the cable end is going to go here and it's going to go through here. And it's going to, when you pull the lever, it's going to pull the arm up, which engages the brakes. So that obviously you want this side to go up facing towards the cockpit. So I already know these bolts work in this, in this adapter. I'm just gonna start that one. I'm gonna get this one in. Maybe. There we go. So this, because this is the mounting bracket, this doesn't have any adjustability. The, where the bolts bolt onto the, the, sorry, the caliper bolts onto the mounting bracket, that's where the adjustability comes from. So I'm just gonna loosen those bolts off. As, uh, I mean, these, these rotors are not new, obviously. They're still the ones that were on the bike originally, but I don't want to mess them up as much as possible either because they, um, they are perfectly fine. There's no pitting, like it's, it, they're actually perfectly fine. I wouldn't even buy new rotors. So let's check it out. gotta be kidding me so I know there's gonna be yeah I don't know but I'm assuming that there's likely gonna be people that are watching this video that are thinking yeah it's gonna work and uh, yeah it works like really I'm honestly I'm shocked right now like, look at this I haven't even set it up yet and it doesn't even rub. Now, the brake pads aren't in it, but still, that's crazy to me. The only thing, uh, the only tricky part about this is because this is stripped, that Allen, that Allen head right there is stripped, setup might be a little, setup might be a little tricky, but I'm gonna see if I can get that backed out a little bit. A few tricks that I have up my sleeve. So anyway, compatible front and rear. So now that I know that that's compatible, I'm gonna remove the cassette, hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed, and uh, deal with that mess back there. So I'm in the midst of removing the cassette I've got the cassette tool on here and I did it off camera because I thought, well, I'm just gonna have to absolutely reef on this thing, but no. Like that's honestly how loose it was off camera. So that's pretty, pretty cool. So far this is meant to be. So yeah, we've got, oh, there's no spacer. Okay, so that's okay. Take the cassette off here. Let's get rid of this stupid thing. Right in the bin. I shouldn't be so quick to say stupid thing because I shouldn't be so quick to say that 
about the precious darkness because they are required by law to be put on, to be put on to bikes. So to free her body spins great. There's no play. So that's good. Bearings need work. So I'm gonna see now if I can get these screws loose, which sometimes these screws can be a pain. You wanna make sure you put tons of pressure, downforce pressure on the screw when you're turning it. But you don't wanna strip these guys. good kind of unusual <laughs> so far. These rotors need a good cleaning and resurfacing as well, but you don't want to get grease on them if you can help it. Never get grease on your rotors or your calipers. This, no this, doesn't matter, just don't do it. It'll severely affect your braking almost to the point where you would need new rotor and new pad even. So yeah, there's the disc off. And so now that I've got this done, um, I'm actually going to go clean the wheel and then I'm going to do a hub service. Before I do that, I'm going to take this. I have no idea what this thing is here on the spoke. Probably it was some sort of, oh, it's a magnet. It was one of those uh, bike me computers for distance or RPMs or whatever they use that stuff for. I'm not into that too much. I, I just ride because I absolutely love it. So anyway. I'll spare you the cleaning detail. Okay, I'm just gonna take the uh, axle off here. See what we have for bearings. A little spacer in there, see that? That's, uh, that's good. Dust cap going on here. I gotta take this uh, off anyway because it is. Oh no, not this one. The front is the one that's loose. But. Both of them are gonna get a service. This side of the hub now that you've got that side off because you don't want to lose the bearings let's turn this over just when you're working in here just be mindful that there are bearings that you don't want to lose
take these ones out first. Not a whole lot of grease, that's for sure. Now, just be careful again. So that's the race cup in there, which actually doesn't look terrible. It doesn't look terrible. I mean, it looks terrible, but it's not the worst I've ever seen. And then this side, a little bit gummy, but uh, again, I'll get that clean. And then these are the bearings. Those are the bearings out the drive side. And those are the bearings out of the non-drive. It's pretty good shape. Once I clean those up, they're gonna look brand new. You'll see, see this here. Look at that. Now, maintenance guys, <laughs> maintenance. The bearings look like uh, in, and once I get the uh, this goes down into there. So once I get the axle in, I'll put a little bit more grease over top, and then just a little bit, and then uh, I'll put it back together. Nice and smooth, no play. Beautiful. Just clean up around the area here. Any excess grease. <laughs> it's 
so far so good on this. So yeah, now I'm gonna clean up the rotor. So I'm taking this off now. This is the front wheel. I've removed the disc already. And uh, as you can see, that's not good, not normal, right? So we need to address that, take the axle out, do bearing service, all that stuff, just like we did with the rear. Okay, so I got the bearings out of the front hub here. And they are dirty. There's the bearings now clean. It's hard to tell, but you can see all the stuff that came off. So crazy. It's clean race cups. They're not pitted at all, so that's great. So when you clean rotors, make sure you have clean everything clean cloth or paper towel. Uh, this is brand new and so is this guy. And you can see a little bit of grease coming off of the rotor and in here I have isopropyl alcohol. So I just spray that on and then just go around the contact surface Well, there's the cassette, all nice and cleaned up. And reinstalled.
Well, it's official. I now have disc braking. Disc brakes on the Giant Rebel 2. Who would have thought? Disc brakes on the Giant Rebel 2. Crazy, all compatible. Everything is working as it should. <laughs> now I just gotta go on a hunt for an eight speed trigger shifter. And I'll keep you in the loop for that. Let me know what you think. It all worked out. I even got the rear wheel centered. <laughs> I'm pretty, I gotta say, I'm pretty surprised it all worked out.